Hello, and welcome to The Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, The Word of God, and how to incorporate it into our daily lives. Jonathan? Yes? It is still Christmas. It is still Christmas. Most people have already long forgotten it and moved on to buying Valentine's Day things, I'm sure. Not at my house. We still have the <laughs> lights up. You're going to have the lights up till June. I know how it works. <laughs> well, they're, they're still on, at least. They're still on. Yes, yes. <laughs> so this Sunday, officially now, is the final day of the Christmas season in the new calendar. Or in the calendar of the Second Vatican Council. Got it. Yeah, so we've got... The Epiphany, which kind of concluded the 12 days of Christmas Mm -hmm. on January 6th. But in the United States, because that's not really a holiday for us, we move it to the Sunday between the 2nd and the 8th or whatever. And so we've already celebrated the Epiphany. Mm -hmm. And then we have another full week. And the last Sunday of the Christmas season this year is the Baptism of the Lord. So after this Sunday... On Monday, no more Christmas lights. However, it is tradition to keep your nativity scene up until the Feast of the Presentation on February 2nd. Got it. So, but Christmas technically will now end with the Sunday celebration of the Baptism of the Lord. Which Which is is kind of confusing because you picture then, we have baby Jesus and baptisms are, you know, usually babies, but not to the baptism of the Lord. 30 years have passed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we are ready to begin his ministry. But before we do that, let's go back to the Old Testament, the prophet of Isaiah. Yes. He is comforting his people. Yeah, so it says, Thus says the Lord is the beginning of it, which a lot of the prophet stuff starts that way. But it's that the Savior is coming. You know, that he, he is going to send the one who's going to save everybody and do all the good things and... It, it, it really is going to be a recap of a lot of what we had been hearing throughout Advent. Comfort, give comfort to my people. Uh, your day of salvation is at hand. The, and it just... It, Guilt expiated. All of these yep. things that you've heard. I mean, when, as you listen to the first reading, just apply it. Think about the person of Jesus Christ. I mean, Isaiah, I think, is prophesying peace to his people who've been in exile and coming back and you know he's really kind of speaking to that but in the larger scope of things he's speaking about salvation right that will be taken up in jesus christ so that's really listen for that as you listen to that first reading this sunday what's our uh, response oh bless the lord my soul And this psalm, interesting, I think it it fits very nicely with this feast because maybe not in the refrain, oh, bless the Lord, my soul. But as you listen to the psalm, as you read the psalm through, it talks about how basically God has taken the chaos of the waters and of darkness and has brought life out of them and has brought light out of them. And that really is what the baptism of the Lord is about. He goes into the chaos of the world's sin and uses the water to bring life now to come out of it. So there's there's a bit of the psalmist is giving thanks for creation. Right. That God has gone into creation and in creation has taken the scary and the destructive darkness and floodwaters and brings out life like it's going to be the waters that bring life out of the world which is what baptism is for us which is what baptism is for us it brings life out of that which is dead so the psalm not so much the the response but again listen to those uh those tropes or those phrases as as they're being chanted or sung hear the the god using the waters and the light out of darkness to bring life to our our broken world it really is very baptismal for for this feast yeah Okay, Paul's letter to Titus. Right. We don't get too many of these. They're I, not, not many at all. <laughs> Titus was one, yeah, they're short letters to begin with, mm-hmm. and they're very practical, so, you know, they don't speak to many of the, the feasts that we celebrate, but L- Paul's letter to Titus, again, is, it, it, it's focused on living that moral life. Right. I yep. think, you know, what are you called to now that you are a baptized person? Right, and that Jesus came and sh- showed us the example, and he died for us so that we could be freed from these things, 
and then this is where the life to live. And that's really where it points Jesus' baptism to our baptism, which we'll talk about in just a bit are two very different things. But it's that connecting piece that Jesus died and our baptism connects us to Jesus' death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And that's now, now we're a new person. We're out of darkness, out of the chaos of the, the destruction, into life. We have to live this new life now. And so, so do it. Live, live a life uh, of a Christian. It's pretty simple. Uh, simply simple. In, in stating it, yeah. not simple in living it. Right. Well, it is simple living it if you're not bogged down with the things of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Our gospel. This year, again, we are in uh, Luke. Oh, by the way, you may be at a place, if you're not at St. Charles, you may be at a place where you hear different readings. This is, again, like uh, the Feast of the Holy Family that we had a couple weeks ago. Yeah. This is one of those feasts where it gives you the first reading and the second reading with their psalm, and then the gospel rotates on a three-year basis, and you can use the same readings every year. Or... It gives you the option to use the year B readings or the year C readings. And we are going to use the year C readings, which are the ones we just talked you through. Okay. Yep. Now that that point is over. <laughs> uh, Luke's Gospel. It's kind of short. It is. And it is. We're getting to the baptism of Jesus. But it, right. it doesn't go into a lot of detail. You know, it's just John is there. People are wondering how great he is, and he says there's someone greater than me. Jesus happens to be there, gets baptized, goes off to pray, and then the heavens open up. Behold, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. I believe that's the right words. Does this you one, are my beloved son. This with whom one, I'm well yeah, pleased. the father speaks directly to the son yes. in Luke's retelling of this. Yes. So Luke's gospel is one of the Matthew and Luke have the two infancy narratives. Mm -hmm. So Luke's gospel has a lot, two chapters of the infancy. So this is the baptism of the Lord is already the third chapter of Luke's right. gospel. So, you know, it's not his grand beginning. He's already done the grand beginning of who Jesus is. And now it's like, and then the next thing that happened. And so for him, the baptism uh, is, is an event that happens in the long line of things. Uh, and what's significant here is what you said, that Jesus went down and was baptism, and then he was praying. Mm -hmm. And it was while he was praying that the heavens opened up and he heard the Father speak directly to him, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Yes. There is that direct conversation. Luke's gospel often depicts Jesus at prayer. Mm. Prayer after his baptism, prayer at the transfiguration, prayer and calling his disciples, uh, teaching the, the disciples how to pray, prayer at the Last Supper. I and mean, there's just, Jesus is often shown to be a man of prayer. And it's in that, I think, that he really knows who he is. And it's really how we know who we are. Yeah, that that is... It's hard if unless you know your, yourself in relation to the Father, you don't really know who you are. You don't. And this is the words that we, we should really all hear these words. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we hear those words, uh, whether we're male or female, in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So just as, you know, this is this is one of those things where theologically we are all sons of God because we are in Jesus Christ who is the son of God. Right. Just as like we are all brides of Christ in the church who is the bride of Christ. So there's a theological point to be made here. The sonship uh, is not because we're a boy or a girl that's been adopted by God, but sonship in Jesus Christ. Yeah, He's they, the only son. It gets a little more metaphysical. <laughs> it, absolutely, which means beyond the physical world. Yes. Metaphysical, <laughs> beyond the physical. So the, the, this, this gospel, I think, really is revelatory because it's a second epiphany. It is the second epiphany. And we talked about that uh, this past, when we were talking about the epiphany, the mm -hmm. three epiphanies, the magi, the nations coming to the, the manger, the, the baptism of the Lord when there is this revelation, 
and then the the miracle of Cana, the first yes. miracle of changing water to wine when those disciples first believed. So we continue the epiphany in this, uh, the baptism of the Lord, and hopefully it's an epiphany for us where we ask ourselves, is this Jesus, the Son of God, D really, really and truly? And we say yes to that. Yeah. And then like Paul's letter to Titus, well, if you believe it, live it. Right. Live it. Okay, Jonathan, well, I know you've got to start taking down those Christmas ornaments. <laughs> no, leave them up for a little bit longer. And uh, I will see you on Sunday. Sunday.